Greetings. I welcome you who have gathered today, wherever you are, to worship at this service of the United Church of Christ in Nielsville, Wisconsin. I'm the pastor, the Reverend Jacoba Coppert. I thank all who are assisting in our worship service today, including our virtual choir. We also thank uh, Lorraine Shaw for uh, offering our broadcast this morning, remembering the anniversary of her uh, marriage to Bob. Our music today is copied and streamed through our licenses with one license net. Friends, we have come from many places to this time and place. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I invite us to, to place our hands upon our hearts and to um, remember this day. Those who worship with us, those who have worshiped with us in the pews of this congregation, um, those we are missing, and to, to hold them into our hearts and to connect with them this day, even as we connect with God. Let us remember our friends, our family, separated in this time of COVID. I invite us to receive the peace of Christ. My friends, the peace of Christ is with you. And place your hands together and let us uh, offer that to one another. Echo after me. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 85. Let me hear what the Lord God says, because God speaks peace to the people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him so that God's glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for his steps. Let us pray. God of presence, as you walked upon the water to meet the disciples, meet us in the midst of the storms in our lives. God of renewal, as you lifted Peter from the water, lift us from despair to hope, from distraction to focus, from death to life. God of journey, direct us in your way. Work out your purposes in and through our lives. We pray in the name of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Again, this will be a familiar text to you as Jesus walks on the water. Matthew, we're reading from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was alone, but by this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for a wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. 
saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. May God add God's blessing to it. Will you pray with me? Pray that the words that I speak are faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Let us pray. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday, I wanted to celebrate Baccalaureate Sunday, uh, the day we remember our graduates. I let the compromands who graduated this year know that today would be the day, and then prom was scheduled for last night. So because they can watch this at any time from anywhere, just like all of you, I'm doing what I usually do on Baccalaureate Sunday. I'm talking to them this morning, and you get to listen, if you'd like. Uh, you get to watch. But this is. These are words for them, and I hope they're words for you, too. Class of 2020, we have all heard, and you know well, your disappointments this year. I'm not going to go there. This reading from Matthew follows Jesus' feeding of the multitude. You remember that story. The crowd had been with Jesus. He had compassion on them uh, for the variety of problems that they were experiencing. And he brought them hope and healing. And then he and the disciples, seeing that the people were hungry, fed 5,000 men plus women and children. And there was more than enough. Class of 2020, you've been blessed. And I want to speak of that for a moment as we think about how Jesus fed that multitude. You've heard me say more than once, did Jesus bless the bread and the fish and instantly multiplying them? That's possible. Or did Jesus discover what they had? Or excuse me, did the crowd discover what they had in their pockets that they could share? Becoming more generous than anyone could imagine. You know, I think great generosity, when there is truly scarcity is a greater miracle than Jesus saying the right words, blessing the bread and the fish. So today, as, as we celebrate you, I, I want to point out a few places where you have experienced some generosity, the generosity of church members. Of course, there are others. But Michelle Kranz and Kathy Mathis and Sandy Schmidt, well, they found some extra bread in their pockets and gave it to you and our community through the pictures, through the posters, and they celebrated, we all celebrated, your graduation. Their gift to you, I hope, reminds you that God is good. Always remember that your church is there for you. There are many who have supported you generously offering their time, their talents, and yes, their church offerings, so that you would have a foundation of faith. 
many church members you do not know well have pulled and pr have pulled and prayed for you in these days and the ones that you know not Jenny and Tammy and Mike your mentors and me well I know that I speak for all of them we remain there for you we are willing to support you all your days we have had bread in our pockets and we offered what we could share with you Jesus' time with that crowd was a bit of an interruption. He was going off for some alone time. He needed some alone time. However, when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them, and he stayed with them and fed their deepest hungers. When they all had what they needed, Jesus sent the crowd home and sent the disciples out across the lake while he went up on the mountain to pray. I will remember you as the confirmation class that as a class wanted to pray. You asked me over and over again, lead us in prayer. Lead us in that centering prayer. Uh, we often say that we are um, too busy we act as if we're too busy. We don't have, have or take the time to pray. I have a question. Are, are we any busier than Jesus? Remember what he did in his life. Yet he took the time, sometimes an entire night, every so often, to pray. It wasn't a quickie prayer, though. I suppose he said some of those, too. But my guess is that night, he praised God, expressed his thanks, expressed his fears and concerns to God, acknowledged his need for forgiveness. Remember, Jesus was human, really human, as well as divine. He prayed for others, I'm guessing, and like you, so appreciated, Jesus took some quiet time with his Father. Friends, never get so busy that you think you don't have time for some quiet time with God. Oh yeah, those are words for me too. I taught you some new ways how to pray. Remember what you learned. While Jesus is praying as his disciples are crossing the lake, uh, a storm, a wind uh, whips up. The boat is so battered by the waves, even the fishermen are scared. They knew the danger of that sea. They knew not to cross it at night. But Jesus told them to go. There will be times when Jesus tells you to go where you are not so sure you want to go. In life, there are times when God calls us to go to places we haven't gone before, places to where we will have to stand up for our faith, places where we will, must right an injustice, places where we are called to care for one in need, or where we are called to use the skills we did not know we had. If you discern Jesus is telling you to cross the lake to a new life, trust him. Returning to our reading now this morning, the disciples in the boat are already scared when Jesus walks toward them. His coming terrifies them even more than the storm. It can be overwhelming, scary, as well as reassuring when we experience Jesus coming toward us. Hear his words to the disciples and to all of us. Take heart, it is I. Don't be afraid. 
class of 2020, hold on to those words. Jesus still says them to us. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter took Jesus' words seriously, saying, um, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, Jesus, or Peter did not just jump out of the boat. He asked Jesus first to tell him, even command him, as to what he could or maybe even should do. That's a wise decision, friends. In my graduation cards to you, like I sent you in June, I reminded many of you to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit before you jump into your future. Today I say to you, class of 2020, before you jump into the lake to do amazing or maybe even the mundane, ask Jesus to command you. When I have listened to God's call to me, it has gone much better for me than when I haven't. And I told you in class of sometimes when I did and sometimes when I didn't listen to the Lord. Asking Jesus to command us is a good idea. Jesus did, did tell Peter to come. Peter did, then did what was most astonishing of things. He, he walked on the water toward Jesus. Truly a God moment. And then Peter looked around. And he saw the waves. And he was overwhelmed by what was, he was doing, what, what was going on around him. The storm was still blowing and, and the waves were still crashing. Just because Jesus is with us doesn't mean that all will be calm. Peter, filled with fear, took his eyes off of Jesus. And well, you know what happened. He began to sink. I don't need to say much more than that, do I? I'm sure you caught the lesson. You were a very bright class. Many of you are graduating with honors. Congratulations. Peter, realizing he was sinking, called out to Jesus. There's a time for those quickie prayers. And this was such a time. Lord, save me. We often pray the quickie prayer. Lord, save me. Lord, be with me. Jesus promises to be with us, maybe even holding our hand as we face the challenges in life. Friends, Jesus extends his hand. He offers it, even when we don't ask, saving us, saving all of us. Jesus knows sometimes we are those of little faith with our doubts. Yet that doesn't stop Jesus from saving us. A few months or maybe even years after this incident on the lake, when Jesus tells Peter he will deny him, Jesus also says to Peter, I'm praying for you. And when you have turned to me again, strengthen your brothers and sisters. Which we might understand as Jesus saying to you, when your faith returns, when you're brave again, when you're ready to follow me again, feed my sheep. Love one another as I have loved you. Love the Lord your God. I hope, class of 2020, your, your faith continues to grow and to be strengthened, that you are brave and trusting in God's abiding care, even as I hope that for myself and for all of us who are listening and watching. Back in the boat, the disciples all worship Jesus. Friends, may we each, as we are able, whenever that is, wherever that is, 
be those who worship Jesus. Amen. Karen is going to play for us, hold my on, on the radio, and we'll hear the virtual choir. We come to a time of prayer. And I want to say just a moment, um, if there's anyone who really would like to pray in the sanctuary, please give Audrey or me a call. Um, we are one of us here almost every weekday in the morning. And so if you'd like to come and have some quiet time, it's okay. Let us know. We'll, uh, we'll let you in, give you some time. Today I'd like to pray uh, as I taught the Compromands and as they so appreciated. And so I invite us to take a deep breath and hold it and let it out. Well, would you lay your hands maybe on your lap as you wish, fold it or open your feet on the ground and take a breath and let it out. Know that when we breathe in, we are inhaling the love of God. And when we exhale, one of the things we do is we exhale God's love into the world. So we inhale and exhale. The disciples were on the boat. Jesus had told them to get into that boat, and a storm whipped up, and they were afraid. I would invite us this day to, in our hearts, in a quiet time, to, to name those who are filled with fear in these days. Maybe it's us. Maybe it's someone we know. Maybe it's someone who is um, uh, struggling with decisions they must make. Maybe it's someone who um, is uh, uh, afraid of illness. Maybe it is someone who is um, afraid of, of the consequences of all that is going on in our world today. Maybe it's someone who is literally facing some fear because the storms are coming toward them, and they know it. Let us pray as we are in the boat.
Jesus comes walking toward the boat and the disciples. And he comes toward us, too. He says to his disciples, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. I invite you to lift up your prayers that you might have for Jesus at this moment when you feel him coming near. Peter gets brave. He says, Lord, let me come to you. Jesus says, come. Where are the places we must be brave? Where are the places we must reach out into the world? Where are the places we must share our faith, live our faith? And Jesus extends his hand. And we know, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall be saved. Lord, help us to find times to worship you, to adore you, to thank you, to acknowledge our shortcomings, to have time to be in silence, to hear what you have to say to us. We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time in the service, if you were all here, I would offer you the offering plates. We can still be generous. We can still offer our gifts. Oh, yes, of course the church could use it to extend our ministry into the world, but really what's most important is that we are generous ourselves because it is to generosity that God calls us. We need not fear the days ahead. God is generous to us. And so let us be generous, whether it is gifts that we mail in or, or gifts that we go th offer through our bank and, and send in that way, or, it's, uh, or gifts that we bring into the office, or, or it is gifts that we offer of our time and our talent, either in this place or, or in the community. We are invited to be generous. So now, I invite us to dedicate our gifts. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we believe that you have saved us, you are saving us, and you will save us. We offer to you our whole lives as a living sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Use us and multiply the gifts we have committed to you and to our church to extend the invitation of life, community, and the purpose in this place and around the world. 
Amen. Yeah, if Jesus calls you to get into the boat, be brave. Go ahead, even if it's in the night. Go ahead. And, and if he in, scares you as he comes to you, remember, he says, it's I, do not be afraid. So, my friends, take the risk. Move into the world. Share God's love. Share God's peace. Work for justice. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.